Hi friends, welcome back to Anne Jutenit's Knitting Podcast. My name is Annena and I come to you from Finland, uh, where I live with my two boys and my husband. This is episode number 16, so welcome or welcome back. <sighs> I already started to film, or I at least I thought I was filming. I was going on and on about my sweater that I'm wearing, and then I looked down to my iPad uh, where I have this um, this uh, mirror the screen um, um, option, and I saw that I'm not even filming, so <laughs> I have no idea what I already said. But let's try this again. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Anne Juti Nitz. You can find me on Ravelry as Anne Juti. Um, don't message me, message me there because uh, I can't uh, seem to get around checking my messages there. Um, but I do have a group uh, on Ravelry called Anne Juti Nitz. And I have also a group on Facebook called Anne Juti Nitz. But Instagram is the way to get the hold of me. That's where I'm most active and that's where I'm most definitely going to reply to your messages. So if you have something you want to tell me or if you want to message me, have a little chat, then Instagram is the place place to go. <laughs> um, thank you so much for, for your lovely comments uh, on the last episode. It was so nice to read all of them. I always appreciate every single one of you who who leave me a comment. And uh, yeah, today is uh, December the 2nd and uh, it's Thursday. I'm filming you uh, in the morning. I think it's around 10. Uh, it's almost 10.30. And now the lighting was nice so that I can, can get some uh clear footage uh, on the video. Let's get started. Um, today I am wearing my tree line sweater. I tested it this in, over the summer to Faye Kennington, who is also known uh, as Yuki Knits on Instagram. I will pop her details on the screen. And the sweater is called tree line and I use drops merino extra fine to make this uh the yellow was something similar um wasn't the drops merino it was something else but the same yarn weight and the same content so yeah um i i needed the size medium i'm probably more uh on the uh, size large myself but this gave me a nice fitted fitted um, sweater and uh, yeah it's a very very nice pattern it has this beautiful color work on the top um, the only thing I will mention that it doesn't have a lot of short row shaping on the back and sorry adjusting a little bit um, and as a, a little bit more uh, busty person um, <laughs> I would probably need a little bit more short row shaping. It's uh, now that I have been wearing this uh, a few times. Uh, it's been a, a bit colder period now here in Finland. Um, I find it rising uh, a little bit uh, on the throat, so it's it's not very uh, comfortable wearing. You have to constantly pull it down. So if I would to uh, if I would make this again, I would add a bit more shaping on the neck so it would um, lean a bit towards the front and it wouldn't choke me <laughs> but otherwise it's a really really nice pattern um, the yarn itself not so much um, I actually had bought the the teal yarn to make a sweater for my son or either of my sons but um, when I saw this test call that was the yarn that I had in stash, and that's what I uh, ended up using. Um, my problem with Drops Merino Extra Fine is that it tends to have a lot of knots, which I'm not a big fan of. 
And for myself, I prefer non super wash yarns uh, because they are more, um, yeah, warmer and they're not, um, you don't really feel sweaty or it's not. Um, I don't mind the little scratchiness of of a uh, of a woolen yarn, so I prefer woolen yarns myself, and also they hold their shape a bit better than a superwash yarn. But yeah, this is the sweater, and uh, I think I will get a lot of wear out of it this uh, winter. It has been, like I said, a colder period. Uh, this week, I think the coldest was minus 15 degrees uh, Celsius, and that's kind of, it's already a bit crisp. Um, so, woolly, woolly knits are essential <laughs> this time of the year. Okay, let's get started. Uh, today, I have a few finished objects and a couple of whips. And... I am also uh, talking about the the cardigan that I made with the the app called Bellish. Mm, but today I'm not going to follow the the normal pattern, showing first the FOs and then going to the whips and such, because um, these <laughs> um, my subjects are kind of um, uh, overlapping, so I'm just um, going with the with the order that's uh, that seems the most um, natural to me. At the end, I will also show you my box of socks for this year. I have made twelve pairs, and I will now introduce that box to you because there's already one pair that I would really like to use. So I will show it now and then i will get to wear my christmas socks um that are in the box of socks um yeah let's move on to my finished objects <clears throat> like i said uh i don't uh I, i'm not going to follow the certain pattern for this uh thing but i have two gift knits that i have made and they are both uh beanies so here they are. Ah, this one. Uh, the pattern is Ruskobini, which is my uh, my own pattern. And I think I showed you this hat already in the last episode. This is now a little bit modified version um, of the actual pattern because uh, my dad has a very small head. And I know he's very specific how he wants his hats to sit on his on his head. So I did make the ribbing a little bit shorter, and I also made the hat a bit shorter so that um, he doesn't find it too slouchy. <laughs> and yeah, so I talked about this previously. Uh, it's made in uh, Art Libris Baby Alpaca, hundred uh, percent baby alpaca, very nice and soft. I made my husband's sweater using this yarn. It's a bit, um, if you have knitted with baby alpaca, it's very soft, it's very drapey, so it doesn't really hold its uh, shape very well, but I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping my dad will like this hat. And the other version was this light blue. I don't know if it looks gray on the screen. And this one I made, this one I made to the pattern. I will pop it on. You can see the difference. So the pattern is made with a very um, wide uh, brim. And that's the, uh, the reason is that then you can fold it uh, a bit less and then have like a sloucher look. Or you can fold it like this, like I would wear it. Um, fold it very wide, and then it sits on the head. It has this nice little detail on the crown. It's a uh, this three point um, decreases, and I don't know. This is 
I think this is now the fifth uh, Rusko beanies that I have made. And I think I might have to make one more for myself because the one that I uh, um, originally made for myself with uh, using mohair, it, uh, it was too big. I made the size medium and my head is small. So um, I don't know, I should have known better <laughs> and made the small version for myself, but uh, my husband got a nice, nice hat. So uh, this light blue grayish um, color is created by using two different yarns. Um, I had this Merino. This is just Merino sock. Uh, my friend Sophie has uh, dyed this for me and it's a very nice uh, soft Merino sock, uh, a little bit of nylon content. And I paired it up with uh, this. It's Drops Alpaca Mix. Um, it's 100% alpaca and this is actually probably one of the nicest drops yarn that I have worked with. And <laughs> this was left over from my uh, reed sweater that I wore in episode two, I think, but it has since been gifted to my sister because it looked better on her. Um, I had nearly one skein left and I just have like a tiny bit left on this this leftover skein. Um, with this project, um, it was going a bit slow because I stopped petting the fabric constantly or like I, I knitted a couple of rows and then I started like, this is so soft, you can't imagine. It's like, it's so soft. It feels so nice on the skin and it feels super warm. Um, I'm hoping, um, this is a Christmas gift for my godson. Um, he is 10, so uh, I I made this the adult size small. And I'm hoping his sensitive skin will take this, but I, I'm pretty sure because this is just, it's a dream. And yeah. Do you ever have that? <laughs> Do you ever have that uh, problem that you um, you have to either stop looking at your beautiful work or uh, petting the fabric that it creates? Sometimes it's just so just so nice. So this was a very enjoyable knit because I really do like the way these two yarns play together. I have um, another color of this uh, left. Uh, from the sweater, so I'm thinking I might pair it up with with uh, merino and make like an under mittens for my uh, for my son because it gets really cold here in Finland. Uh, so a double layer of gloves uh, sometimes it's needed. They are spending quite a long time uh, outside uh, in daycare, so I think they are like uh, one and a half hours at a time. So I think for the winter, it would be really nice to have like a very warm uh, layer. So like an underglove. So I think I will utilize those leftovers that I have. It doesn't matter which color they are. Um, it's, a, it's this kind of bright olive green, uh, the one that I have left, but it's, it's not gonna be uh, showcased anywhere. So. Uh, Yes, that was a lot of rant <laughs> over <laughs> over a hat. But yes, uh, those I have finished and those uh, those are nearly my all. I only have two more uh, Christmas gifts to make and then I am done with the Christmas knitting. Okay. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the Bellish app. And this section of the podcast is uh, generously sponsored by the Bellish app. 
So thank you so much for uh, doing that. So uh, to be clear and to be open about it, I have been paid to, to review the app and to need a garment using the app. So I just wanted to make it clear. So yes, um, this, this is now the finished object. It's a cardigan for our eight-year-old. <laughs> it's really hard to show a, show you uh, show you the cardigan. So uh, one more thing, uh, I will give my honest opinions, and obviously the, the opinions are my own. And uh, although I'm getting paid for it, I really enjoyed using using the Bellish app and. I will talk about that a bit more. Um, so when I started making the cardigan, I had um, I had already actually did I had already decided to make a cardigan for our daughter for or my stepdaughter, and um, I will put now here the the way the design process that I that I made by using the app. So it's a very fun way of creating patterns. It's, um, I have been playing with the app quite a lot. <laughs> I have, I have uh, created other patterns as well, um, which uh, was just so much fun. And that was not part of the deal. <laughs> I just really enjoyed using the app. Uh, the Bellish app is for iOS devices uh, at the moment. I think they are working, working on, uh, on the Android uh, version as well. But if you don't have an iOS, um, device you can also check their website there's over a thousand free patterns over there i will definitely link all the details down below in the dis description box but yeah so i chose the <clears throat> basket weave so the constructions is from bottom up uh, i chose the basket weave um this uh stitch pattern and i i I curated the pattern for uh, DK and worsted weight yarn, and I swatched. Even though the the yarn is DK, I got gauged with the the worsted, so I used the instructions for the worsted weight yarn. I haven't blocked this yet because uh, last weekend when I got, I finally finished uh, this cardigan, and we took some pictures. I will insert some pictures here, and. She wanted to wear it immediately, so I didn't have the <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her not to wear it. So um, <clears throat> the yarn is Noveta Bully Wood. It's this. It's a Finnish tensile merino blend, uh, <clears throat> and I really enjoyed uh, using this yarn. I had two balls uh, in my stash, and then I went ahead and bought two more and I actually had one untouched skein um, left. It has 225 meters uh, in a in a one in one ball 100 gram 100 gram ball and <clears throat> three balls was enough to make all of this. The modifications that I made was um, it says to 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 bind off and then sew the shoulder seams and <clears throat> I didn't I did bound off and I didn't like the way the mattress stitch looked so I did like um I sew it sewed it together using like duplicated stitching so uh, I was mimicking the the stitch pattern, and of course it shows because uh, I have bound off. I had bound off the shoulders already, but um, yeah. And the other modifications modification that I made was that the instructions tell you to make the button bands and then <clears throat> to make the neck band. And I picked up the stitches along the whole edge 
and made it with uh, one go because I didn't really I didn't really want to have a seam here. Probably it would have, you know, it would have um, hit under the the first button, but also because I'm lazy, I wanted to get it over with uh, as easily as I can. Uh, now that I have um, finished it, I I did check my gauge and I'm a little bit tighter, but I haven't blocked this yet, and and this yarn stretch stretches out quite a bit, so I think I will hit bang on uh, the gauge that uh, that was um, set in the pattern. So I really liked I really liked working. Uh, working up this cardigan. I liked it so much that I started the second one. <laughs> and uh, one thing I'm really happy about is my sleeve. I think I managed to pick up the sleeves very neatly. This bottom up construction is not my favorites or not my go-to, but I think I think I did a good job. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that I will say uh, I made the 8 to 10 year old size and this is the cropped length and I don't think it's really cropped. Of course, that depends on the child. Um, I did follow the pattern and follow all the measurements and I don't mind it's not being cropped. Um, I thought it would be nice with uh, like wearing uh, over the dresses, but uh, even if it's longer, you can just button one. You can just uh, button one of the buttons and then um, then it will lay nicely over a dress like this. So yeah, uh, I'm really happy it's done. And I was telling her that this is one of her one of her Christmas gifts because it was quite a quite time consuming. And uh, yeah, and. Uh, now that I'm sh I'm talking about this cardigan, I told that I went ahead and bought another um, color of this yarn, and I'm making another 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 one of these for my uh, niece. And this time, I made it fully cropped. This is now the size six to seven. And I did uh, crop it a little bit more because I had an idea to to make her this this cardigan when she goes to her ballet classes, so that she can wear it over over the the bodysuit <laughs> bodysuit uh, and a little um, a little skirt thingy. So uh, it's still missing sleeves. But I'm really happy about the length. And this time uh, I bound off the shoulders by using three needle, three needle bind off. And I think this looks really nice. And uh, with this three needle bind off, it's always uh, the corresponding stitch um, connected. So it looks really neat, really neat and really nice. This time I did pay more attention to the button bands. Uh, in the first one, because the pattern doesn't say how many stitches you need to pick up, uh, it just says to pick up uh, stitches uh, divisible by four. And I, I thought I, <laughs> I thought I had like a correct uh, math, and I did have for the ribbing, but then. I had a little bit of problem centering the I I don't think I had equal amount of stitches on each um button bad area so I had to fudge it a little bit so this time I placed stitch markers on the 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 line where the stitch pattern ends so this is the portion where I will have my buttons and I made sure that I have uh, a good amount for five buttons, and then I picked up equal amount for the front of the neckband, 
So I placed stitch markers on the shoulders and I made sure I had an uh, equal amount there. And then uh, I made the neckband a little bit tighter than what it was on the on the first one because that was kind of uh, droopy, especially when you're wearing it with just uh, one button fastened. So I I did um, I did take that into consideration and made it a bit tighter around the neck <clears throat> at the back. So yeah, you live and you learn. This is how we evolve. Uh, about the app, I I do really like. I had this is now uh, the third project that I curated the pattern for. I did make these toe up socks using using the Bellish app uh, a couple of episodes ago. I will insert a picture here. And I usually make my socks cuff down, but I had these little nuggets of, of yarn left and that was my godson's favorite colors. So I really want to make sure that I had enough. So I started from the toe up and used up the whole yarn that I had left, so. Yeah, um, I really wish that they would have like a raglan for the kids. Um, I'm thinking of making myself a raglan sweater at some point. The, this boxy uh, drop shoulder is not really my my go-to <laughs> fit, but in these uh, relaxed cardigans, it works out really well. But I would really enjoy if they would have a raglan version for kids as well because I have I have some uh, children's basic sweaters uh, that I want to make and I have the yarn for those so it would be really nice if they had that. So thank you Bellish for giving me the opportunity to to review the app. Uh, I had so much fun and yeah I will I would definitely do this again if if someone would ask me. It was a very fun project and it was so much fun that I, I even started the second one. And that's that. And I have two more finished objects. But before we go uh, into those, I will show my whips first because then I will um, I will slide into the next, <laughs> next topic um, after that. So I showed you in the last episode my son's uh, woolly pants. And they haven't grown much, but they have gotten maybe 10 centimeters off the legs. And <laughs> this week when, uh, I think it was Monday when it was 15 degrees out when we woke up and I was like, oh man, now I would definitely want to want to want to have my son wear these thicker uh under layer or middle layer uh but the pants weren't ready so that night <laughs> i did uh continue these a bit so last time i showed you this i was just split i had just split for the for the legs so I made a little bit of the pant legs um, during that night, but I haven't had a, haven't had the time to continue. So I'm using these two. I showed you in the last episode. I'm using two uh, superwash merino yarns. I think the other one is sport and the other one is fingering. Um, so they. I, I'm knitting it with a DK worsted gauge and the, there's no pattern. Uh, I'm using 4.5 millimeter needles and and um, I just um, wing it as I go. I, I showed you last time those um, sweatpants, <laughs> those black sweatpants that I'm using as a guideline uh, to make this make this project. So now I'm all tangled up. <laughs> That's that. So one more uh, whip. And let me tell you, this one is giving me, it's giving me a headache. Um, I have been planning on making 
felted slippers for my husband for a long time. And I have bought these needles, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, now I just opened the package. So those felted slippers have been on my mind or felted mittens for quite a long time. But um, I haven't got around doing it. And that's because I like to be in control. And when you are felting things, you're not in control. You have no idea how the wool will um, act in the wash and if it's going to felt the right amount, if it's going to felt uh, too much, not enough. So yeah, it has been giving me some gray hair. So these will eventually be the slippers. I'm using Drops Snow. I bought this over the summer when my sister and I had a little browse uh, on a sale and we ordered some yarn and I thought, I don't know, I didn't have any calculations. I didn't know because I haven't done a felted project that three balls would be enough. Let me tell you it's not. Um, by the time the first ball ended, I was here, just around here. So I knew that one and a half balls per slipper is definitely not going to cut it. Uh, so I went stash diving and I found this um, pencil rowing uh, in my stash. And I thought that together with this uh, blue, this blue yarn, uh, I'll stripe them and it will be enough. Well. It's not. Uh, I paired this with a single ply um, wool that I had left over from my painting bricks sweater. Uh, not sweater, the, the, the shawl. And the reason why I did that is because this uh, pencil rowing is very, very uh, delicate and um, it doesn't really take a lot of pull. So I did uh, end up pairing it up with, with the other one and I managed to get gauge, the ex exact same gauge, but it's not going to be enough. So what I had to do uh, two nights ago, I went ahead and I bought some more yarn online. So what I will do, I will rip back to the gray, and rip that out and of course they didn't have the same color anymore so i ended up buying navy blue snow drops snow and i will do it um, in this similar way so that i will continue let me show you i have this nugget left i divided one of the balls in two uh, by pulling the whole whole ball into two strands and cut it half in the middle. So I will continue striping as long as I have uh, left of this or as far as, you know the drill, as far as this will take me. <laughs> and uh, so I will rip out the gray and continue with the blue and stripe this as long as I have it. Have it and then I will continue and finish it up with um, with the blue. So I have made slippers uh, without felting before and they are made so that you you do like a garter 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 oh garter uh back and forth and when you have the right amount or the the opening is big enough then you would join them into the into round um, and then continue with um, EPNs like so or whatever uh, these are eight millimeter needles and I don't have I don't have a decent cable <laughs> I don't have a Chayaku cable uh, of eight millimeters so I had these needles and I decided to use them rather than um, ordering another 
another set of needles because I don't think this is the size that I would quite often use. So, yeah, we will um, we will see what what this will be. <laughs> I'm really anxious about this project. I really want to make him slippers because he has he has uh, been hinting that he he would really like thick woolly slipper, slippers and he's always cold his his um, hands and feet are always cold so I'm trying my best and I'm hoping the best that uh, it will turn out nice my husband is not watching my videos so I'm pretty open about sharing these things and I'm, I'm still pretty sure that it, it will be a surprise for him uh, for Christmas um, one second, I will have a drink. I was a bit sick last week. Um, I had a cold. I lost my voice on Friday. And even this Monday, I didn't really have like a decent voice. So now that I've been talking so long, um, the voice is starting to disappear again. All right. Then, uh, finished object. Um, I mentioned in my last episode that I have, I've, I have knitted some secret projects. And as I mentioned, um, also in the last episode that I have, I have this mystery knit along going on, uh, over in my Ravelry and Facebook groups, uh, for knee high socks, uh, stranded color work. And this is, uh, set of mittens that is made using the same pattern. It has a little snowflake on the thumb as well. And this is the first pair that I made. These are uh, this is the the trial the tryout pair and it it was perfect for my hand but my hand is on the smaller side so i did end up uh, adding a couple more rows into the color work so that it will be enough for a, a bigger adult size hand um because of the the width of of this um uh, of these patterns and because it's uh, double sided uh, I only have one one size in this pattern so I wanted to make it a little bit longer and then changing the needle size and um, yarn weight you can have more size options so I couldn't show these because these uh, three patterns are uh, from those socks and they weren't released uh those clues weren't released yet and this is a pattern that i'm publishing together with the the finalized sock pattern uh on 6th of december so monday 6th of december that's a national holiday here because it's our independence day and that's when i am going to going to release this pattern i am making a second pair using the the same same uh, color scheme that I have in those socks. So um, this one was just made with using my favorite colors, and this is a pair for me. And then um, I'm making a second pair using red, blue, and or red, navy, and white. And that's the colors that I used in those socks. So those mittens for my those mittens were my fourth finished object and now i'm going to show you the fifth but i'm first going to show you the box of socks which is now done and those christmas socks were the last were the last pair for that and here they are they are so long that they don't even fit the screen 
So I will slide them over the screen. Back. There you have them. So they are uh, knee high socks with the Dutch uh, heel construction, um, the box heel that I have been talking about. Christmassy, wintry um, pictures. And these are very Christmas uh, <laughs> related in Finland. There's these advent candles. And these um, these are the pastries that we always make make over the Christmas and some candles and snowflakes and yeah, here they are. And these socks are knitted uh, in Novita Seitsemän Veljestä, which is this yarn. And this is the most basic sock yarn. I have talked about this a lot in my, or not a lot, but I have mentioned this yarn. This is the one that we always start our knitting journeys with. And um, it's a worsted weight, 200 meters per 100 grams. And now that I have found the love for thinner socks, I'm not very uh, big fan of, <laughs> of this yarn. But um, I wanted to make I wanted to make these socks uh, because I have this Facebook group uh, that I'm hosting the Cal for the second time, or actually for the uh, third time, but second time uh, for Christmas socks. And um, this is most commonly used yarn weight here in Finland, so that's why I chose this one. But I think this is now uh, my last color work pattern, sock pattern for this specific yarn weight because I'm not really enjoying making it. These socks are called Joulutunnelma socks. And Joulutunnelma means like um, the Christmas feels uh, or uh, the Christmas atmosphere. And uh, I think they have a lot of Christmas feel in them. Uh, I designed this pattern already last last uh, Christmas uh, over the holidays we had. I I don't know. That's when it the inspiration struck and I'm really happy that they will be released very soon. So these together with these uh, will be released on the 6th of December. And this was now the last pair for my box of socks and i was thinking to show you all of the pairs that i have made uh this year this doesn't have all of the sock pairs that i have uh done this year but these are the pairs that i saved until the end of the year um so some of them are going to be my my own some of some of them uh my husband will get and then there will be a few pairs for uh, some family and friends to give us a Christmas gift. I will start from the first pair of the year, uh, from the first pair that I saved into the box. And it is this. These are just basic socks. Uh, I made, I made this, um, Two stitch cable. Uh, they don't have a pattern. It's just like a regular. I have no idea how many stitches I used. I think I have this project on Ravelry, perhaps. I did um, Eye of Partridge Heel. Not my favorite, but I <laughs> wanted to try it out again. And um, the French. No, this one doesn't have the French French turn. It has the it has the box heel construction, so the Dutch um, heel flop and gusset, and then like a, a rounded, rounded toe, the way I normally do that. And it's also made uh, in this woolly wood yarn. It's a nice non superwash. 
this was actually the first uh, time that I used the yarn. I think it was, I think it was released uh, earlier, early this year. I think this was like their new yarn for this year. Uh, it's from their Earth collection, so it's not superwash um, yarn. Seventy percent tensile, twenty percent merino. Um, I don't recommend this yarn for socks. It feels very. Um, it doesn't really have like a a decent. It stretches, but I think that it will. Um, it doesn't really pull back, so I think they will be kind of loose house socks in the end. Uh, at the moment, they fit really nicely, but I don't think that's going to be the case for much longer. The second pair. Sorry if you're hearing the clinging and clanging of the <laughs> of the handles of the box. I try to now set it uh, on the uh, on the arm of the chair so that you don't have to hear the clinging clanging. So the second pair, this was a test knit. Um, this is called Watlia Socks by Elian Wall. Unfortunately, this pattern is not out. Um, even though I tested it this um, uh, in the beginning of this year, I think she had uh, she had a tragedy in her family, and she has disappeared from from internet. She did mention mention that she's now going to take some time off, but I think that was in February. And uh, very talented. Uh, very talented, aspiring designer. She has, I think she has like a couple patterns um, published. And this was such a fun knit. It has this detail at the back. Uh, she herself, she herself described this as a subtle in the front part at the back, <laughs> uh, like a mullet. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed cabling these socks. I I did the short row heel, um, not my favorite, but yeah, this, this yarn is something that I have dyed myself. These are actually probably, this is probably the first or second yarn that I have dyed myself. And I've been using this in a lot of projects. And yeah, I think this might be the whole, my favorite pair of the whole bunch that I have made this year. So I'm really excited to start wearing them. That was my pair number two. Uh, I may have to look at my notes because I wrote the order <laughs> that I have made these in. Uh, all right, the, sec uh, the third pair, it's just uh, vanilla striped socks. And this pair uh, uses the Murshel constructions. Construction. Uh, so the instructions are from Murshel pattern by uh, Knitting Traditions Inga. And um, actually, I just watched her episode this morning and we have a little collaboration going on. Um, I did translate this pattern to her because I am teaching these classes, um, knitting classes. Now I have been teaching this uh, stranded colorwork yoke sweater class. And in the spring, my classes will be socks and heels and, and another. Uh, general knitting class. So I asked her if I could translate this pattern to use on my class uh, because I really, really, really enjoy the fit of this heel. And I have knitted this in a couple of my socks. So yeah, I did translate this to her and uh, she actually has a promotion code for my uh, for my patterns. So if you like to purchase any of my patterns, uh, we have a promotion going on for two weeks. So have a look at Inga's latest episode to find out the code. 
yes. So that was my uh, pair number three. Uh, just basic vanilla sock using scrap uh, scraps that I have um, the scraps that I had left over from other projects. And then uh, my fourth pair was this. Uh, they are called Hari socks. And this is a pattern only in Finnish. It's a lovely lace lace pattern, and the pattern is made for um, sport weight yarn or DK maybe sport. Uh, this is sport at least I know. Um, the yarn that I used is Kaupunki Lanka Rotvalli, which is a very similar to Novita Nalle. Uh, same content, same feel, same everything except this is the this is the um, other brand uh, we sell here in Finland. And this was my actually my first ever pair of lace socks. And the theme for this year has been that I will I will always try to learn new techniques. And I think this was the first pair that I also used this. Um, the French turn for the heel. So um, I have done the Dutch because that's the one that we we are taught in school. So kind of it has stuck to me because I can do it uh, my eyes closed in and backwards and <laughs> whatever. So. My plan for this year has been learning as many new techniques as I can, and that was one of them. The second, uh, the next pair, it's not the second, it's already the fifth pair, is these. This is also uh, a stripey pair. It's a, uh, I had a 20 gram mini and I wanted to use all of it, so I started with it and then I striped as long as it uh, lasted. And the other one is something that I have dyed myself. And this has the French French, um, French turn uh, heel flap and gussets. And I did a, an anatomical toe decrease onto these ones. So it's... Um, it's steeper on this side and then shorter on this side. So um, big toe and then the rest of the toes. They have now been blocked and stored in a box for a long time. So it's it's not probably so visible. And then uh, the next pair was also a scrappy sock project i have shown this in the in one of my episodes in the summer and this is a pair for my husband uh it doesn't have a pattern i just cast it on a number of stitches can't remember how many this is now made with novita seitz and velista which is the same yarn that i've been using so worst of weight and the the pattern pattern is uh self draft <laughs> and uh yeah i just wanted something some color work that was simple enough to not have to look at that and in this one i tried to make the gusset decreases on the top and the bottom uh so i wouldn't interrupt the pattern and that worked out okay, except that I should have I should have done like a decrease round and then two <clears throat> like two uh rounds without decreasing because it's stranded color work and it would have just given a little bit more space for the foot to slide in. These are for my husband. <clears throat> my voice is uh starting to break. Let's hope it will last until the end. Okay. Um, the next thing is something that was 
uh, was in process for a long, long, long time. These socks are my tool and varied socks. I talk about these socks in one of my episodes. I can't remember which. Um, at least in the first one, I will I I introduce them as a whip, and then I think it took me half, one and a half years to finish this. This is my first ever release pattern, tool and varied. It's made in Novita Nalle, so the sport weight Novita yarn, and um, I did change the pattern a bit uh, when I was making these because they weren't just, they didn't come high enough. So I added one uh, extra pattern to the ankle before the heel, and that's why um, I never got around making these. But yeah, I finally finished in the summer <laughs> also this pair. Uh, this is a free pattern uh, on Ravelry. Uh, but unfortunately, it's only in Finnish. But if you are comfortable, comfortable uh, knitting with charts, you can definitely, definitely whip this up. They have a whole whole chart. Uh, you don't have to, you don't have to um, count numbers because it has all the decreases in the chart. So you can definitely make them if you are interested. And the next pair was. Uh, these summer socks are uh, called Pientare Sukat. This is uh, a Finnish, Finnish designer uh, called Jonna Kapela. And this was such a fun, fun knit. It has like a little, little flower details. You embroider the flowers into the pattern. It has uh, marked spaces where you you embroider those so it was nice and fun and the yarn is very lovely I got it from uh, Holly from Canada and it's an ancient arts yarn and it's really really beautiful a very bright and colorful right up my alley right up my alley and next um, <laughs> my own design uh, Taito socks. Um, this is a pair that I made um, when I was designing the pattern. Or actually, this is the second. I made one Taito sock uh, with Finship wool yarn, but because it was so dark and so busy, it didn't really show the, the pattern too well so I ended up changing it into a solid color. This is quite dark so you can't really see the pattern so well but it does have like this folded ribbon sort of detail going around the ankle and on the top of the foot. Um, yeah and then I made a vanilla pair. I have actually shown this recently on my podcast. Uh, vanilla pair for my husband, just very regular. Um, I have been trying to find the perfect, the perfect way of uh, making his socks um, with figuring weight yarn, and this was a nice pair to test it. But the next pair I will deduct a little bit stitches from the ankle but then have more on the on the arch of the foot he has very high arch but very narrow foot so yeah i'm still working on the recipe <laughs> and lastly my Uusi Jula socks uh, the reason why i wanted to show, show you to tell you about all of these projects all of these sock projects that i have been doing this year because um, I really want to get this uh, into active use. I will definitely pop this on already today, now that I have shown it all in the podcast, because now it's December and I really want to make or to wear my um, Christmas socks. Woo! 
that was a long rant. <laughs> I hope you didn't get too bored. Uh, I had a lot of things to talk about today. And uh, yeah, if you really, uh, if you liked my videos, please give me a thumbs up. And um, I will, <laughs> I will really appreciate if you do that and subscribe, subscribe if you like my videos. Uh, I will give a little bit of a an update. Actually, I do have one acquisition that I quickly want to show you, and then <laughs> let's see, let's see um, if I had something else to say. For the next uh, video, I was thinking if you guys are interested. I was thinking of making a stash video where I uh, show you my stash and talk you through my stash uh, because I'm, I have been trying this year to just buy yarn for a certain project. So I was thinking it's not going to be like uh, sit down, um, listen to me kind of a podcast. So if you are interested, that would be like a bonus episode, uh, which I would do in the next couple of weeks, in the next two weeks. And leave me a comment if that's something you would like to see, because that's something that I, I kind of would like to make for you guys to watch. So I would also, I have been keeping track of, of uh, the projects that I have been making, how many projects, how much yarn I have used. So I will talk numbers also in the stash video, if that's something you would like to see. So tell me in the comments. And then my last video for the year, or it might be on the first days of the new year. I'm thinking of making like a whole year wrap up video where I will um, show you in a picture form um, all of the projects that I've made. I think I'm just gonna make like a little collage. And then um, I was thinking of, um, and then I was also thinking of um, showing you all the whips that I still have uh, in my shelves and project bags, if that's something you would like to see. Because I started my podca podcasts, um, because I started my podcast career uh, by showing you <laughs> all of the whips that I had, I will now do a recheck and bring out all the whips that I still have and that would be a fresh start for the new year and then we can compare if my podcasting continues um, to the next year. Um, I am really happy that I have started podcasting. Um, this has been such a, a nice creative outlet and I have enjoyed truly and I have truly enjoyed getting to know new people and all the knitters, uh, it's been so much fun to interact with you guys and I have found new friends and I'm really happy about that. Um, yeah, one more thing and that's acquisition. And that's only, I, I do only have one and I already told you about this in, in my last episode. So the thing is that I have ordered myself an advent. And it's huge. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, it ca came in a box. And uh, <clears throat> it has 24 20 gram uh, skeins. And uh, actually, it does have another one. I didn't know about that. I just found it. There's also a present. Uh, Whoops. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed these uh, stickers that they had. There's the ones with numbers. And then there's ones with, um, with, with the uh, written numbers. So it says V is toy, so which is 15. And then there was this fun little thing. In Finnish, um, Kuusi, which is a spruce, a uh, Christmas tree, spruce, uh, it also means number six. So spruce, 
Number six, kuusi, same word. How fun is that? <laughs> so I thought it was so funny that they had like a kuusi as in a picture form. And that's that. Um, I have not bought anything else and I'm not planning. Oh, actually I did. When I ordered uh, the yarn for the Christmas gift, they had um, alpaca party. So they had all the drops, alpaca blends and alpaca yarns. Um, they were 30% uh, off. So I may have bought a sweater's quantity of brushed alpaca silk just because um, it was so pretty and was so cheap i paid for 20 i paid for for the sweaters quantity i paid for 20 euros so i think it was a bargain and because professor pearl uh, has uh, enabled me to make a million love notes <laughs> i decided that i definitely need a fluffy one and with a more open open gauge because my other one is um with sport weight yarn so i will make another love love note for myself um uh, later on but i will show you that in the stash video because that hasn't arrived yet Ooh. i think this was the longest episode that i have had for <laughs> forever <laughs> like this yeah it was the longest video that i have ever filmed uh, I hope you managed until the end. If you didn't, well, life life is, that's what life is. I hope you managed until the end. Or if you did, uh, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you uh, wanting to spend your time with me. Um, leave me a comment about those uh, those videos. Uh, what, you, what do you like to see? And then I will uh, come back to that. Oh, and one more thing. Um, one of you asked about, uh, because I mentioned that we have a renovation coming and we have a sauna. And if that's something that is very common in Finland, uh, the answer is yes. Everyone has a sauna. <laughs> Not everyone, but most of the apartments, even, even these apartment buildings that we live in, most of the apartments have a sauna. Uh, personally, I have never lived without a sauna, um, except when I was traveling in, in Australia and living in Australia. Um, so that's the only time in my life uh, when I didn't have a sauna. Or actually, when we were kids, uh, the first the first uh, apartment that we lived in before my parents built a house uh, did not, but. The time that I remember, I have always had a sauna, and that's a part, a big part of uh, Finnish culture. And they make, they can, you can have like a one room flat and still have a sauna. So <laughs> that's that's how crazy we Finns are, and yeah, it's very common to have one. This is now where I say thank you again, and I will talk to you uh, in some form. Uh, in two weeks i'll hope i hope you have a great day wherever you are and whatever the time is and yeah, happy knitting bye